Uh, hello everyone, my name is uh, Srihar Joshi and in this video I'm going to explain to you about 233's, uh, the process of execution of different operations and the complexity analysis of those operations in the 233's. So what is a 23 tree? A 23 tree or a 23 search tree is a multi-way search tree that was invented in 1970 by John Hopper. It's the simplest example of B-tree. So what is B-tree again? It is a self balancing tree data structure that maintains the sorted data in its nodes, which can have more than two children. Unlike in binary search trees that can have a maximum of two children per node. To be more specific, two, three trees are trees of B trees of order three which means that at most they can have three children in a single node. And one prominent characteristic of two, three trees is that all the leaf nodes, regardless of the numbers of leaf nodes, they must be at the same level, which means that the height is always balanced in a two, three tree. Since two, three trees themselves are a specific instance of a B tree, they do not have any variations. However, the nodes they contain can vary. The node can be either a two node or three node. Two nodes contain exactly one value and the values in the left subtree are less than the value in the node and the values in the right subtree are greater than the values in the node and th uh, for the three node they contain of two values and three ch three children so uh, the values in the left subtree are less than the first value of the node which in turn is less than the value of subtree in the middle the values in the middle subtree are less than the second value in the node which in turn is less than the value in the third and the rightmost subtree so why do we need two three trees? As you can see in figure A, it's a binary search tree and it has an imbalanced height. In its worst case, the binary search trees can have linear height and making the binary search effectively impossible. But for the same values inserted, the, uh, the two three trees can have balanced height as the, the height of the tree grows upwards. Hence, it is more easier to balance the height in the two three trees. And the second point is that uh, when since a, bi a two three tree has two values can have two values in a single node and can have three children both direct and indirect accessing is made easier uh, in two three trees so this nature of the two three tree to store data in a more compact manner makes it useful in file systems and databases where disk seeks are considered expensive and should be minimized as far as possible now let's discuss the common operations in a two three tree so first we'll begin with search uh, the method by which we will search is recursion and it goes as follows so if we have to search a value then we'll compare the value with the values in the node if it's less if it's less if it's less than the left value in the node then we'll move to the left subtree if it's if its value is between the values in the node we'll move to the middle subtree and if its value is greater than the rightmost value or the second value in the node then we'll move to the right subtree and as we move down as we proceed to the bottom we have three base cases and uh, out of this if the tree is empty then we we couldn't found the keys and if uh, the current node is still is, is the key that we are searching for and perfect we found the key and if the current node is, doesn't have the value or is some other value then we conclude that we don't have any values uh, that we are searching for in the binary in the in the two three search tree let's move on to the process of insertion uh, our insertion can have three cases and the first case is uh, when we want to insert in a node with only one data element so for instance if we if we want to insert four in the uh, two three tree that we have given on the left hand side so we compare the value with the uh, parent so four, since four is less than five we move on to the left subtree and since four is less uh, four is greater than two we put it just on the right hand right side of the two on the on the same node so in this way uh, the value was inserted now the second case for insertion is when we want to insert in a node with two data elements whose parents contain only one data element so for instance in the left tree that we have shown here we want to insert 10. So since 10, we compare with the root node. It is greater than 5, so we move to the right subtree. And we again compare this value with the existing values in the right subtree. So 10 is greater than 6, 10 is greater, 10 is greater than 9. So we, put, we create a temporary node uh, in the right subtree. But our insertion doesn't end right here. What we do is move the middle element in the parent node, and we split, split the node. So here, we moved 9 to the parent node, and we splitted the node and now 6 and 10 are two different individual nodes in the middle and right subtree. So the last case for insertion is when we want to insert in a node with two data elements whose parents also contain two data elements. So for instance if we if we want to insert one in the left tree that we have shown so since one is less than five we move to the left subtree 
and since one is less than two and one is less than four, we add, we create a temporary node. Uh, and once we create the temporary node, what we do is we split the node. We we first move the middle middle value in the root in the parent node, and we split the node. First, so here we move two to the parent node, and we split the node. So now one and four are individual nodes. And finally, we follow the same process with the parent node, which is we move the value middle value to the parent node and we split the node. So here we we moved five to the parent node and we split it the nodes so that two two and nine are two distinct nodes. So in this way, the tree's height grows upwards, and this is the result reason why it's easier to balance height in two three search trees. So now let's move on to deletion in two three trees. Similar to insertion, there are three cases in which uh, deletion might occur in two, three trees. So for ins uh, the first case is when we simply delete the value. So if we want to delete nine in the left tree that we have given, we proceed and search and we search and proceed to the nine and simply delete it. So for instance, here, nine is greater than five. So we move, it must be in the right tree. We move to the right. And since nine is greater than six, so it must be in the, uh, the second, second value. So we just simply delete. There is no change in the tree, the structure of the tree. Our second case of deletion occurs when we want to delete and merge. So for instance, the left tree that we have given, if you want to delete 80, so we first search. Since 80 is greater than 70, it must be in the right subtree. So we found it. And then we, we simply remove 80. But now the step doesn't end here. Since not the nodes containing 80, node containing 80 will be vacant, what we do is we merge the node containing 80 and 60 together. And we pull the value on the parent to the bottom. So here, the 70 was moved to the bottom as a, as a right child now. Our third and the final case for deletion is when we want to, we, when we have to do borrowing. So for instance, the left tree that we have given, we want to delete 60. So search 60. 60 is between 50 and 70. So it must be in the middle subtree. So we found the value and we delete it. Since the node containing 60 will be vacant now, what we do is we borrow values from its sibling, either left or right. So in this instance, we are borrowing values from right but we do not borrow values directly. What we do is we pull the values from the parent down and we uh, take out the values on the right or left tree, whichever we have borrowed from, and we put it as a, as a parent. So as you can see here, 70 was pulled at the bottom in the place of 60 and 80 was moved up. Now let's discuss the complexity analysis of a two, three tree. If the space complexity is uh, uh, linear, which means that for n nodes, we need n amount of space. And uh, now let's talk about the time complexity. Since uh, the height of the tree is always balanced and the complexity of different operations on a tree is directly related to its height, a 2-3 tree, tree is highly efficient. So since height is in the order of log logarithmic of n, which is where n is the number of nodes, so all the uh, operations like accession, searching, insertion, and deletion, all these are both in the worst and average case, log logarithmic of n. Now let's discuss uh, how we can implement a uh, two-three tree on different programming languages like C++, Python, and Java. So, uh, since a C++ doesn't have a standard library to implement a two-three tree, some of the functionalities and benefits uh, of using the two-three trees can be achieved by using maps from STL containers, which are implemented using red block trees. And uh, we also have libraries like Adobe Forest and CoTree to create a two-three tree in C++. Similarly, in Python, we don't have any standard libraries, but we have but uh, but these can be implemented. Uh, the two three trees can be implemented using classes and list dictionaries. Uh, but the process it's, itself might turn complex and time consuming. Hence, we have libraries like uh, and any tree tree lib and networkx. And uh, last but not the least, for the Java, it's the same as uh, C and Python. The standard library doesn't have any implementation for the uh, two three trees. So, but uh, tree maps from the standard library can be used to perform certain functionalities as they are based on the red black tree. And uh, we also have libraries and packages like B-Tree and JavaX Swing Tree uh, to implement 2 3 uh, Lastly, I'd like to uh, end this video. I hope you enjoyed and had a deep understanding of 2-3-trees. Thank you.